Hey guys, it's Seba Footy HD here as we look to start the Premier League season in episode two. Episode one, of course, we just signed a couple players. Didn't really do much. As you can see, we have a big game today against Spurs. But first, we're going to go into this press Thanks, conference. Guys. And we're going to get started with the questions yeah, now. Just uh, want to say about the last video. Oh, there's also this really weird glitch. I don't know why he was standing up. But after he spoke, he decided to take his feet, uh, a seat. I just wanted to thank everyone for the support in the last video. I mean, it's the first video. Got 50 or so views, couple likes. Thank you guys. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to get this out okay, guys. the next day for you guys to watch if you know want to. I don't know, have some entertainment today on this Sunday um, afternoon. But anyway, as you can see, you might notice that a player or two are missing. Because off camera, I decided to sell off three players. I'm going to show you those players in a bit. You might already be able to guess who they are. But here, you can see here, you got Vidra, who I already said I was going to try to sell off long on loan. I don't know why I loaned them out. Goodmanson for a hefty price. And... Bardsley managed to get him out as well. So overall, got back around 13 million. And the only reason why I really sold off those players is because I saw Goodmanson's transfer from Wolfsburg and I figured, okay, that's a pretty decent price for a pretty old winger that I don't know if I'm gonna enjoy using. And I don't you may have already saw or seen, but <clears throat> we have Charlie Musonda on the transfer hub. And Everyone knows Charlie Musonda from previous FIFAs. This guy is a massive talent for Chelsea. He never really got the chance, or rather, he was always injured, so he never got the chances because of that. And I wanted to give Musonda a chance at reviving his career here at Turf Moor. Honestly, I don't think it's that unrealistic of a transfer. He's getting back into full fitness. I've been seeing videos about him. Chelsea, I don't know if they're going to really give him a chance other than out on loan. So maybe a move to a lower Premier League team to establish himself could be a good idea for him. And only four million for him. I thought I'd have to pay a little bit more, but for around four million, I ended up agreeing with uh, Thomas Tuchel. And I think that's a great offer for the Belgian winger as I'm going to look to turn him into a beast. Obviously, we have uh, Robbie Brady on the right, but he can, obviously with his young age of 23, he can take over that position maybe soon. The only thing that worries... The only thing that worries me about him is the injury-prone trait. Could come back to bite us if he gets a big knock, but also the large wage. I was kind of um, scared that he would ask for a large wage, but ended up being able to get him on a bit of a pay cut, as you can see. I think he went down, yeah, 15K. Still a little bit more than what I wanted, would have wanted to give him, but obviously you sign a player from Chelsea. They're going to want a decent wage, as that's what they were receiving in their last club. So with that out of the way, we managed to sign the replacement to Goodmanson for around $4 million. And as you can see, we still have a lot of money in the transfer budget, around $10 million. And I was looking in the transfer hub. Uh, I'm going to quickly show you guys what he looks like in his Burnley jersey. Um, yeah, if it'll even load. He's going to be taking the number seven with Sunday Jr. Hopefully we can turn him into a great player. He used to be five-star skills, five-star weak foot, but... Now, he obviously only has the five-star weak foot, as well as the 88 acceleration. is going to be absolutely rapid. And I went into the squad hub to, you know, sort the team around, realizing I have a decent amount of money left. And I looked in some of the positions that maybe we were lacking in a little bit, and I realized that in the center back position, we only have two center backs, as well as one backup center back who's pretty old, not really sure what the names are. Well, I know the two starting center backs, but the, the one backup center back, I forgot his name. And then we loaned out two center backs, I think. But yeah, Tarkovsky and me, Taylor, I'm looking at the defense, and I realize that we might need a backup center back. See, Jimmy Dunn's our only backup center back. And I don't think he's even good enough to be our backup center back alone. So I figured I'm going to go into the transfer hub. I'm going to look at the center backs I have. I still have a lot of money left. Let's see if I can maybe find someone to bring in. I looked at Scott McKenna. I looked at Callum Chambers. So unfortunately, I wanted to bring in Callum Chambers, but he went on loan out to Osasuna. Had a couple options here. Some championship players, some Premier League players. And initially I wanted to go for Scott McKenna, but then I went against it. 
because it's this Ben Cabango has the same rating as McKenna, just three years younger. Oh, <clears throat> that was that was an interesting voice crack, but yeah, so I see that Cabango is basically the same value, just three years younger. And I know Cabango is having a great season in Swansea. Swansea themselves are having a great season. And I wanted to bring the Welsh center back in. See, as you can see, around 10 million left, and this transfer is not going to take me any more than 5 million. I tried to be stingy, give him a pretty cheap offer just to get them talking. They wanted Jay Rodriguez, but I wanted to keep this guy around. I, I honestly rate Jay Rodriguez a lot. It's a shame what happened to him at Southampton with all of his injuries. But I wanted to, I mean, obviously he's a little too old to revive his career, but I wanted him to have a proper send off here. And I wanted to see how he would do here. So I kept him around, and I, we agreed around a 5 million offer. And yeah, now we'd go on to the wage. I was a little confused where he went when I was playing this, but he was on the bottom. And yep, we're going to go into the contract negotiations with him. And I'm not going to really narrate this too much, but I wanted to say I just came back from watching the Arsenal versus Man City game. I don't know if you guys watched that game, but Arsenal played absolutely terribly. The defense was... I don't know, I think it was a poor selection. They really couldn't get the ball out of our own half. Midfield, Shaka and El Nani are just too one-dimensional, in my opinion. Just really poor. I think it was a poor lineup. Also, Pepe. <clears throat> Pepe being a very good left winger, but struggling on the right. And for some reason, Arteta decides to play him on the right this game. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm an Arsenal fan. And Obama, I don't know, he's just been really hit or miss this season. The entire squad has been pretty poor this season i mean there's been a couple highlight players you know saka emil smith row but obama obviously not having that great of a season as well as um you know lacazette even though having he even though he's our top goal scorer not having that many goals but yeah we ended up agreeing an offer with swansea for ben cabango as you can see 4.5 mil he'll take the number four and I think this is a great signing after a couple seasons when Ben Mee obviously is too old to play. He'll step right in there. And uh, yeah, that, I think that would really be it for today in the transfer hub. I think uh, in the transfer window, I think we might make one more signing before the end. Because I mean, 5.4 million. But look at this. Our first monthly scouting report came back. And look at this guy, Max Mason. Around 1.7 million in the value. I got excited when I saw that. And look at this, Stanley Wood, great potential. Holt, great potential. Our first scout was absolutely incredible. But Max Mason, maybe we can turn him into a little bit of a one club man, you know, a hero for Burnley, a guy coming out of the academy. And we're going to check him out straight away. See, I did some of the position changes already. But Max Mason, 63 rated. And this is what annoys me about career mode. Every time you scout a center mid from the, um, from the what's it called? The like the youth academy, they ha always have terrible defending, and they're always clearly a center attacking mid, and it frustrates me because, see, obviously he's a center attacking mid. Two weeks, but I don't want to play with a center attacking mid. I want to play with two box to box midfielders. So even though I could probably get him a quick rating boost, I want to train him into a center mid. I want this guy to be. In a couple years, a couple seasons, an absolute beast of a center mid. So I put him on the plan for central midfield. I just I just want this guy to be, you know, a hero for us. And as well, Holt, again, another player. Center mid, poor defending, clearly not a center mid. I, I wish they would fix this. There has to be a little bit more variety. They're always either a center attacking midfielder or a left mid or right mid. They never have the stats for a center mid, I swear. And another one here. Look at this. 35 defending. And it's just this. It's just, it's so repetitive, FIFA. They really have to fix this. I like what they do with the, you know, being able to, like, look at the stats and, like, fix them and turn them into, like, what you feel like would be better. But it's so repetitive. Every center mid's always a left mid or a right mid or a cam. Every center back or every other center back usually has really poor defending and he's, like, a better, I don't know, striker. Or they give you, like, a six foot six right back. Like, it's just so repetitive. I would love to see one day, like, a really low rated goalkeeper like an 18 rated goalkeeper and you can change him into a striker so i don't know some some variety because 
You never see like a center attacking mid with amazing defensive stats that you can turn into a center back or a center mid. You never see that. Right? At least I've never seen that. But here we go. We're going to go into the first game of the Premier League season against Spurs. Now, this is a big game for us against a very big team away. And I was a little nervous going into this, not going to lie. I wasn't that confident. I, I've never played with this Burnley team. This would be my first game with them. Harry Kane, of course. Hyung Min Son. Massive players. But I'm going to give the debuts to... Joe Ellington, uh, Furlong, I think I threw in there, and uh, McGinn. And, yeah, we're going to see how we can do in this first Premier League game. And, uh, yeah, first chance of the game fell to Spurs. Spurs running forward, good cross, and we get it away. Look at this. Look at this for a run from Ben Mee. McGinn plays it in to Westwood. Now Wood on the ball. Look, Ben Mee still making the run, and Wood tries to play him in. I wanted to score an absolutely... Phenomenal goal with me, but couldn't reach the center back, obviously. A little bit of a misplaced pass. And now Spurs get their chance now. Reguillon steps forwards, puts it in. I think that was a great tackle from Ben May. Just threw a little defensive highlight there. And that was the last moment of the half. As you can see, it's a pretty dull half. Nothing really happened. And this game itself was a pretty dull game, not going to lie. Barely any chances. 0-0. Zero, zero. Let me show you the match facts, too. I think they had zero shots. We had one exactly. Yeah. Really, really dull game. I guess a typical Burnley game. Just great defensive play, but on the attack. Really didn't show any prowess to maybe get a goal. And we're going to step right into the second half here. With Furlong taking the ball up the field. There's not really any space there. You know, just, just playing it around Westwood. And we'll have... In the 60th minute, the first subs of the game. Again, nothing really happened in this game. Really dull game. It's uh, not that entertaining. I don't really know what happened. There was a little bit of a glitch, I think. Uh, yeah, Gareth Bale gets the sub in as well as we bring on. Ashley Westwood comes off for Brownhill. And I even threw in... Uh, who did I throw in? I think I threw in Rodriguez at this point. I, don't, I can't I don't really remember. And yeah, Kane almost scoring off the header right instantly. And here's Bale on the ball song with an opportunity here. This is a great save from Nick Pope. Now Tottenham kind of dominating the game at this point. Lo Celso with a great shot. And now in the 80th minute, we see Tarkovsky gets a yellow card. And we make a final substitution of the game. And I think now we bring on Jay Rodriguez. Sorry about that. I forgot who we brought on initially. It might have been, oh it, yeah, it was Musonda Jr. And it was an easy save, but look at this. Nick Pope on the ball for a long, plays it up the field. I can't believe that this happens here. Lacelso and Son. Actually, I think, I'm, I think I'm thinking about the wrong chance. Or no, it falls right here. Yeah, Brownell, beautiful ball to Jay Rodriguez. Jay Rodriguez is in off the bench. Can he win it for us? Blasted over the bar. I was so disappointed with that. I brought him on as an impact sub and really our first chance of the game blasted it, blasting it over the bar. And that's how that game would really finish. There wouldn't be any more chances and the first game of the season would be a nil-nil draw. A zero-zero draw. The Spurs fans looked very upset. Honestly, it wasn't the most entertaining game, but I will take a draw against a side like Tottenham as the first game of the season. I would take that, honestly. A little bit dull, a little bit boring, sure, but that's just how Burnley play. First game of the season. Zero-zero. We managed to keep Harry Kane out of our box. And I think that's a big plus looking forward as our defense does very well. Also, looking at other games that happened today. West Ham versus uh, Spurs it was. Talking about Spurs, I didn't get to watch that game. But wow, Jesse Lingard has been a revelation for West Ham since he joined. Like, I know they were doing well before, but we just to this guy, I think he, what, he has four starts for them. Three goals, one assist. And just like the dynamic at that team now, like... There's like a, there's like a, like pa more passion. I don't know if that's even the word for it, but they look like they have fun on the field. Like the celebration that they have where they're all like playing an instrument. Like that team just, I don't know. West Ham is the team to beat right now, other than Man City, of course. Thank you for your but time. Another team to talk about, Liverpool. Liverpool versus Everton the other day. That was also an absolutely insane defeat. I, I, 
Everton is usually a very inconsistent team. You know, they have the talent, but they can never really pull it off in the end. But a 2-0 win, you know, scoring early with Richarlison and the penalty. I don't know if it was really a penalty, but I guess he was denying a goal-scoring opportunity. Trent was denying a goal-scoring opportunity. But as you can see here, we're going to go into the second game of the episode. We're taking on Newcastle now. Joelton's former team, I gave Jay Rodriguez the start in this one, as well as Musonda. And, yeah, I think I brought on Brownell for Westwood as well for his first Premier League start. And this is a game that, first game at home at the Turf Moor, I thought this is for sure going to be a game we score and win. And, I mean, with a 4-1, 2-1-2 approach from Newcastle with St. Maximon in the middle, I knew he was going to be a nuisance to take care of. Jay Rodriguez, it was a poor ball in the end into him. Pretty sloppy pass. We haven't really created much. There's another decent tackle. Nick Pope will try to play out of the back with him. Darnell Furlong. Was that a pretty quiet but consistent start to life? I feel like obviously you won't see the defensive aspect of the team too much in the highlights, but, you know, hasn't really messed up in the back, had a couple of decent tackles there, like a, you know, pretty boring attack. We have a opportunity off the corner kick. Jay Rodriguez into the hands of Dubravka. Pretty, pretty dull opening 20 minutes again. Just, it's taking me time to get used to these players. You know, I'm used to playing with extremely fast strikers, you know, extremely fast wingers. And now I've had to transition to, you know, Chris Wood, Joe Wellington, Dwight McNeil. But here we have an opportunity with Jay Rodriguez. He's in behind. And I chipped it over the bar. I do not know why I chipped that. I, I don't know. I saw Dubravka coming out a little bit. I thought for sure it would be a great opportunity to chip him. And Jay Rodriguez just hits it over the bar. And I was like, at that point, I was like, oh, no. What, did I, what have I done? Two one-on-ones with Jay Rodriguez that I messed up. And here we have an opportunity for Newcastle. I thought that was a perfect challenge by Ben Mee. But the advantage gets blown. And I, I don't even want to try to pronounce that guy's name and he has a brilliant opportunity and Nick Pope comes out with a good save Nick Pope also has been playing very well for us as he always does in foot champs against all of us great goalkeeper great save and that would be the end of the first half <clears throat> nothing really happening 0-0 zero, zero still and again going around what a game and a half without conceding pretty good but also a game and a half without scoring as we look to go into the second half and hopefully get the three points in the bag as St. Maximon and uh, Steve Bruce's boys will try to win this game. Also, Joe Ellington this season, or this season, as in the first couple games, hasn't really done anything. I don't know, maybe shouldn't have bought him again. Now, give an opportunity. Hits it right at Dubravka, but it's a good shot. I know he's a left-footed player, but couldn't really move him onto his left, and this happens now. James Tarkovsky gets spun by Almiron. Almiron spins him again, and St. Maximum's in behind. And in the 70th minute, we concede a pretty good goal. I mean, Almiron just absolutely destroying Tarkovsky, who's been very consistent since the start, but... <clears throat> but, you know, what can you do? And then I brought on Jay Rodriguez, hope, hopefully, or I brought off Jay Rodriguez, hoping that maybe someone else could uh, save us at this point. Ashley Barnes getting his first Premier League game in now, and I now I bring on, I think, one more player for the last five minutes. Joe Allenton comes off for Chris Wood, and... Brady in the last few opportun last few seconds of the game. Barnes, Chris Wood, right at Dubravka again. I'm trying to use these tall strikers to the best of my ability. You know, because crossing doesn't really work in this game. As you'll see, we get a corner kick and an opportunity to equalize. I saw this on YouTube that people were taking corners like this, and the header goes wide. And that'll be it for the game as well. It's a 1-0 loss inside two games. We are yet to score a single goal. Yet to really have any good chances. And I'm thinking, wow, I suck. Two games without scoring a goal. Only one point from two games. A big game at home against Newcastle where we might look to regret. We might look to regret that, yeah, in the coming, in coming games when maybe we're down on a few points, down in the relegation zone. And we needed that win to stay up. I don't know. But 
The confidence was at an all-time low right now. We're playing the first place team in Manchester United away from home at Old Trafford. I was scared. I thought I was gonna get thrashed. You know, Bruno Fernandes in this game. Great player in real life. As well as in FIFA, Cavani up top can always score at any time. Pogba, just a great team from Manchester United. As well as bringing in David Alaba for the back line. I thought for sure their defense would have been superb. But in the, in the opening minutes, their defense looked very shaky here as Alaba out of position and John McGinn's in and John McGinn scores our first ever goal in this Burnley career mode and my first ever goal on YouTube. John McGinn, the man that we saw, signed for around 25 million, probably the club record signing, makes a darting run in behind the center, the center backs. I, I just don't know what Alaba and Maguire are doing. Alaba just shifting out of position, and John McGinn just given the opportunity to run him behind, just very poor defensively, and it's 1-0. As United have been for many seasons now, you know, amazing individual players, but it just seems like no matter who they sign, their defense is always in shambles, you know. Always making very poor mistakes there. And that'll be it for the first half as well. We go up 1-0 and basically hold on to that. Um, it was a pretty good chance and we took it and we defended pretty well, you know, as you can see here. Marcus Rashford didn't even realize he was playing until this point as we go into the, uh, the second half, hoping that we can hold on to this lead and maybe even go for a couple more goals here at uh, Old Trafford would be a great result if we could pull this off. Also, speaking about Manchester United, that half. demolition of Real Sociedad in the Europa League. Wow. Bruno Fernandes was superb in that game. I think he got either one goal or two. And I don't know, just like watching him like distribute the ball. And speaking of Manchester United, Chris Wood's in behind. And it's another goal for Burnley. And at this point, like... I kind of feel bad because we just had two stinkers of the game, of games, and we win this. We're winning against United 2-0. But what am I supposed to do? I'm playing on ultimate, and the defense is doing that. They're just letting Chris Wood in behind. They're letting the New Zealand striker in behind. He's not known for being that rapid, but he could just speed through him like that. I don't know. I mean, I'm telling you, it's on ultimate difficulty, and the defense on this team is, are, is still making those mistakes I, I can't do anything about it as well as we put in Joe Ellington through and Joe Ellington has the opportunity to slide in Robbie Brady and Robbie Brady will make it 3-0 and it's a massive upset here at the Old Trafford 3-0 after failing to score in our first two games and the, I mean I don't know if Burnley would ever do that celebration but three goals to United Probably one of their rare wins at Old Trafford. Speaking of Burnley winning at Old Trafford last season, I remember watching Burnley versus United and Jay Rodriguez with the brilliant strike off the crossbar to beat them at Old Trafford. Probably those two are one of their very few ones, as well as now Cavani getting the opportunity to maybe come back in this game. Now, Tecatito. Now it's Corona giving the opportunity to play in Bruno Fernandes, and it's a great save by Nick Pope to keep the clean sheet with us. And we even got an opportunity here to score a fourth goal. Joelinton to Chris Wood, who looks to slide in. I think that was McGinn, but dispossessed. And then he wins it back. The poor ball. Again, United playing terribly in this game. And we're just holding to the possession at this point. Tried to slip in Robbie Brady, probably the poor decision there. And, yeah, I mean, with the last chance of the game coming for Burnley, it was a 3-0 uh, well, game and not really much time for anything else. As McNeil slides in, Joel and can he get his first goal in a Burnley jersey? No, he cannot. In the 3 no scoreline will hold. And that will be it for this game. Yeah, 3-0. And that's our well, first win of the Premier League season. And what a way to get it. 3-0 out Old Trafford. Not many teams come away with three points at Old Trafford. But three goals on top of that absolutely destroyed them. And yeah, that's going to be it for today's episode. Only three games. I might add in some more. But there's also some transfer business, some youth academy business. Next game against Harrogate Town. I think I'm going to play this team. But I'm going to use a lot of the young players for you guys to watch. Maybe players like Anthony Glennon before they go out on loan will get the game in you know we'll try to give the youngsters a chance and see how well they do in this game 
But yeah, that'll be it for this episode. Thank you for watching. Have a good day, guys. And yeah.